Hello everyone, this is uh, MV again with part two of this uh, setting up the soccer blast for a uh, game between Italy 1978 and it will be Holland 1978. The 1978 World Cup, as I explained before, one of my favourite World Cups, one I can remember. I was too young for 1970, with a baby. Um, 74 I can remember collecting stickers for. You know the ones you stick in a book. Anyone in Europe would know that. The same in baseball or American football, particularly baseball, where people collect stickers. I did the same in 1974 as a young boy, baby. But I can remember it vaguely, collecting for Holland because they were a good team that year. I didn't know much about them. But uh, by the time 1978 came around, I had a bit more awareness. A lot of that 1974 Dutch team, which was a legendary team, by the way, uh, were, st were still playing. The missing exceptions here in this 1978 Dutch team are the missing, absent, legendary Johan Cruyff. And there was a couple of other people that didn't play um, in that team. Wim van Hannigan, pass a burly passing midfielder, very hard player. Uh, he didn't play, but he's in the squad here. He played in 1978, but not in the World Cup. And a few others have got the asterisk, so that means you could use them if you wanted to. This is for my own use anyway. Uh, Hugo Hovenkamp, I think, was in the squad, got injured and never really played. And he was an outstanding left back. But uh, they still had a great squad. There's Dick Naninga, who scored in the final itself. Robbie Rensenbrink, who had a brilliant World Cup in its own right. So just talking through some of the stats before we get into it. Um, I've kind of made a mistake on part one. <laughs> I only noticed it as I was looking at the recording. So if you notice, uh, Holland are set up five, for going from left to right. Um, and their forwards are the number ones. Same here in Italy, but it's from right to left. Their forwards are the number ones also. So, I'm, But you can see it's, I'd set it up with the defence being the number ones in Italy before. It's actually ones of the forwards for Italy, so that's the way to look at it. So Dutch are kicking from left to right, and Italy going the other way. It will stay that way. So the goalkeeper, Zoff, was here before in the previous video. He's now in the right spot. So, just a bit more, like I said, the more of the symbols. These are normally symbols, but I've used letters instead because designing it takes forever to get a square and a triangle and a thing in here. But squares means defence, as Rudy Crowe's got two. Rudy Crowe was a, played left back in 1974, he's a right footed left back. But by 1978 he was a sweeper, which is why he's got a circle, because he can intercept and bring the ball forward. He's also got a triangle for that very reason. Uh, circle is about passing, square is defending. So you can tell, I'd moved Ari Hahn, just like they did in real life, to uh, Centre back, although he was really a midfielder, but he's got a DM there. I put it in there. Portfolio, I think, played all of them. Now, I will refine the Dutch team as I keep when you build these teams. And I have a little thing here, I won't show it. It says teams to create. There are some formulas in there for 1978. But if I just did the eye test, as I said before, based on my own knowledge, I would probably come up with something similar to what's here. And there is a formula to cut a long story short without giving it all away. The guide cost about fifteen dollars, I think. I can't remember exactly how much. Please correct me if you know. But it, you know, it's worth reading for sure. A good little read. Actually, I enjoyed reading the guide so much. I've done one for Brazil, slightly different. I've even got the numbers in here, so I'm just playing around with it. But a quick one would be to look at uh, if I use Italy to be more precise. As you can see, I'm building Argentina in the side on the side there as well. It's easy to do. Um, so I look at the players, so you notice they've got the dollar sign there. Really, we, in the card game, it's a scissor sign. So I just didn't want to do scissors. I put two. Basically, it means when I'm working out whether they can shoot with power, that comes into play. Or if they're particularly good at giving an assist for a shot, that also comes into play. Like Maro Belugi, um I've given part of a team total because there are no assist stats in 1978. But I've taken the overall goal scored and worked it out from there. That is almost arbitrarily uh, uh, put around, put, put together. I could just as easily do this, which I would probably do, and give them all, give that extra asterisk to, us, to uh, Antonio. There are some limits you see I'm working with to keep it as close to replay as possible. Uh, as you can see, some don't, if it says minus or two S's or two dollar signs, it will probably have an adverse effect, whereas the two asterisks have a positive effect on the outcome. So 
So Batica was a goal scorer. This is out of six. Um, six would be otherworldly. Five would be more like it. I think Erlen Haaland, who plays in the Premier League, has actually got a six card. This is, un this is very rare. I mean, incredibly rare. So really, five is the top, 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 top striker. But in this World Cup, Paolo Rossi has four. So he's pretty good in that season. I think he scored three goals in six games, which is a, it's a good, good stat for any striker. Uh, and that's how that's formulated. The actual other ratings, they have three qualities. Generally, that's average qualities to have. That's fine. Um, just give you another extra quality there. Um, and then the reserves, the further down the pecking order, of course, the less qualities. But it's all relative to the team itself. And Italy came fourth in that World Cup. They actually beat the winners, Argentina, in the group stages. They were the team I fell in love with as a kid, along with Holland, along with Argentina, and along with Brazil. Those are the four teams I fell in love with, Peru also. So I'm hoping to do all the teams eventually. I've actually done the formulas to rate them. So I don't want to dwell on that screen too much. Okay, so we are ready to play the game. Okay, so let's just get this ball game up. I will make mistakes just to give you a forewarning. Because I, although I've been playing the game for a month, I've yet to oh jeez, I've yet to play a full game. As it uh, continues to play around my numbers, I keep remembering. Uh, okay, so seventy-eight. My hotkeys are set, you see, a certain way, and I keep doing this. I'm so used to playing action PC, but when I go to another game, I keep forgetting my hotkeys are on. And with action PC, I'm used to it. So anyway. Those are the two teams on the field. So I've adjusted the the lineup, as I said. Uh, Betic and Rossi up front. Calcio, Antonioni, Benetti and Marco Tardelli in midfield. Uh, Bellucci and Cabrini are the wing backs. Oh, sorry, it's left backs and right backs. Cabrini was the left back, but that doesn't matter in here. That's just for me setting up. Uh, it does matter where they are in the pitch, however, because ones will come up in more goal scoring situations and twos, and threes and fours and fives and so on and so forth. I said I'll start with uh, Shirari in camera, Cabrini, just to get us off to a good start. These two are pretty similar, so I'll stay with Benetti, the experienced guy. Start with a bit of Antonioni for a bit of flair. I'm sure I took down Belugia a minute ago. and gave him an extra asterisk. See if it does it. Yes, it does. Take that off of Belugi. And we are ready to go. The colour schemes are just my own flair that I've put onto this. Holland in that match particularly played in a white shirt with orange uh, shorts and orange socks. Or even white socks, actually. And the actual Italians in that particular game played in dark blue, white shorts, black socks. So I kind of don't like that, just for my own liking. So we can get into the game now. Get it started, but just for a little extra flair, I do like to uh, do something I did with headed goal. And we shall start in a tick. This is being played at Wembley Stadium. Let's see if this works. line up.
So there is the national anthem there. I don't think I'll get a copyright strike for that, will I? And if I do, sincere apologies. <laughs> but just to add a bit of a thing, I always put the anthems on uh, as the teams line up in soccer for real. And I pad down the screen. So, of course, we've got to do the uh, national anthem for Holland as well. Holland 74. Right, everybody, we are ready to go. This match between Holland 78, Holland came second. As we, uh, the band, want to keep playing. <laughs> so, this is um, Holland on the field now. Take the field, the teams are ready. We decide to kick off, decide to dice. Holland will be zero. And Italy be one, so all of these will mean something in a moment. And I'm going to start, I said it in the previous video. There are certain die that you roll, an attack die, a defense die. Attack die is black, the defense die is white. The green die, which we'll roll every time, these three dice in particular. Uh, have a backup green die here, which is a gold die. If there are tough 50-50 decisions, I'll go with the decider die. The zero is home and one is away, so we'll have a kick off in a minute. Uh, a lot of the game is based around who has the most triangles, squares, and circles. Uh, some of the other attributes that we look at are the, uh, the what I'd call the minor attributes, uh, which come into play from time to time. Uh, the teams are rated by my good self. I've made double check the Dutch one. That was the first one I ever did. These ones are more accurate, I think. But they are based on some team ratings, that's which I've got some formulas for down here. Um, as I said, you can build from the bottom up or the top down. I like to build normally from the bottom up, uh, but for the purpose of 78, I want to keep it that way. Sometimes it will call you to do two die rolls or two six die rolls. So I've got a backup die roll here and a backup decided dice. And sometimes I'm referring to the, um, well not sometimes, all the time, I will be looking at some charts off field. I haven't put the detail in here, but you can see what I'm looking at. I'll be looking at what is called a pitch action chart. And it all makes sense in a moment. So, without further ado, let's see who kicks off as the captains come to the center circle. Rude Crow and Dino's off. They're the captains. And we are going to see zero for Holland to kick off. And it will be uh, one for Italy. So I press my F9. And Holland kick off. It stayed zero. So, I can start it straight away because I'll leave the dice as they are. The first thing you look at is the green die. And what that will do is change to say who is on the ball. So straight away, Niskins is to is changed into Wim Janssen. Okay, there's some variations to that rule, but that's what you do. Then we look at the build chart. It says you add the two together, five and a one is a six. Straight away, I'm going to look off camera in a minute, or off, off into my charts. It's a take on, which means um, one player is going to take on the next. Okay, so it says to re-roll the green dice to determine the quality. The six qualities are pace, touch, strong, hard, tactics, and star. If the offensive player wins the matchup, um, an attack is created. So straight away the game is underway. The backup green die is rolled already is a two. So on that chart, I'm looking off camera on my chart, which I've not put on screen. It's a take on number two is touch. So now I add up anyone who's got touch with the five players on screen. Crow has one. It's one. No, got that wrong. Apologies. The two is where you can go a mess. The two is the quality. Right, good. So I need to work out who are the two players that are facing each other. So I go to the backup dice. It's six and the four. There is no six. Go to the gold dice, it's going to be two and four. So sometimes I use backups. So I could just as easily be re rolling these things, but I'm just using backups. Does that make sense? I'll do it again. We kicked off, 
and the, the band was changed to Wim Janssen. So the three swap over. This is where the camera now is almost as if Liskin's passed to Janssen. Got it. So that's the first step. The second step is to look at the build. What's the action that's taking place? Six. Down here it's a take on. Take on means a one on one matchup. Use the matchup from the dice combination. So though it's a six, it doesn't ask me to re roll. It's the attack of five, the attacking team five. So straight away, William Janssen now has passed a Rudy Crow. So Crow is the attacking player, and he's going to go against the one. Someone's pressing him already, and that is Roberto Betica. He's the one in camera. And the, the skill, as we use the backup green die, is two. Two on the chart is touch. So who beats who? Because it's time to go to decider. So Rude Crow trying to beat the press. His touch is there. And he gets past Betica. So now we have an attack being launched by the Dutch. It's as straightforward as that. Now the attack sequence, because that's the build-up sequence. Or what we call the pitch action sequence. The next part of this is to now begin an attack. Which can be a little, not complicated. It took me a while to figure it out. So it says... An attack can be created in a number of different ways. I don't want to give it all away. But roll the dice for the attack. So here we go. Here we go. So this is, again, I've got it on screen already. I could just as easily use the backup die roll to speed things up. And I'll use that. So it says, roll the dice. So the dice has been rolled. It's already on screen. This is why I've speeded it up. Six to the four. If the black die is equal to or lower than the triangles of the attacking team and the white die higher than the squares, we've got a chance of an on-target shot. So, let's have a look. I can tell you already, Hollander in. Kroll has a triangle. That's one. Wim Janssen has... Wim Sabir is an attacking fullback. He's got two. Wim Janssen doesn't have any. That's two so far. Uh, René van der Kerkhoff has one. That's three. And Rob Renzin because two, that's five. Less than and equal to. So Holland looking good so far on this attack. However, a low roll die for the defense means that they're going to be stopped. Because it says, and the white die higher than the squares, or the white die equal to or lower than the squares, in this case it is. We've got lots of squares on the field for defense. We've got one for Sharia, one for Antonio Cabrini, that's two. Three for Romeo Benetti. The attack is stopped by Italy, because it's good, good. As a result of the stop, I now have to consult a defended chart, which is on my kick action chart. And it's asking me to roll the 12 again. I've used it twice already, so I'm going to roll again. To see where on the chart will take the top. 2.26 two dice roll, it's a 3. And that means D2 has it for Holland. Sorry. Holland for the defending team D2 in this case is Antonioni only if he has a circle if he doesn't Holland begin another sequence in this case the ball is taken away by Antonioni because he's got a circle which means he controls he passes he dribbles and he intercepts that's the kind of player Antonioni is all the while I could just be marking off the timer on here which I'm not doing to show the purpose of this I'm still trying to learn timer so, bet, so what that means is now, Italy have the ball and we begin another sequence, unless I'm wrong. That is correct. So we rolled it, so we've already rolled the dice for that one. Well, without rolling again, I will just use the second die roller to begin the next sequence. It's a three highlight reel here. So without me changing anything, I've just learned that. So Antonioni has it, but it's a highlight reel which is another chart, there's only three, but one has a double side to it. So I'm just looking for the highlight charts already, and here we go. And it said highlight reel, three was a highlight reel, let's just double check that. All these charts in my hand. It says highlight reel M. So there are a couple of highlight reels, there's an M and a CK corner kick and a direct free kick. So this is a highlight reel for the match. We already used this one. 
So I'm going to roll again for another die roll. That's four. It says that the visiting team called for a foul. So the visiting team in this case is Italy. Romeo Benetti is the three. Because it says the green players gets the foul. So I forgot to just do that. For, always do the green die first. So Benetti has it. And he's committed the foul. It says... This is where I have to just remember my numbers. The green die player call for foul argues with the referee. The referee is now friendly to the home offense. So for, for the home team offense. So the referee, I need to get a referee symbol here somewhere. Reminder to self. Has now um, indicated a free kick for Holland. And sometimes it will ask to card him. In this case, but if he's lucky not to get a card because he does carry a stat that if it says he's got a card, he's more likely to get a booking. And if I doubled it, it'll be a red card. So luckily there's no call for him to get any card. But Benetti didn't like the call. He's arguing with the ref, but there's no caution to him. And that ends that particular sequence. So now Holland have the ball and let's do it again. I'll stay with the using the dice roll. I'll only use the backup if necessary. Here we go. Seven. Look at the green die first. That's a five. So what it means is Kroll has now swapped with, or Hahn has now got the ball for the Dutch. Harry Hahn, great midfielder, stroke mid centre defender. It's a seven, so you go down here. It's a midfield battle, which will take some time off the clock. I know that much. If we go to midfield battle, the midfield battle says on the one of these charts, the pitch action chart, it says re-roll the green die for quality. So it's a team quality this time, not an individual one where we saw Kroll take on Rossi. This is an individual one. So again, we're looking at six dice and we can use in this case the gold dice because it's a six dice, it's saying six. It says mark off six minutes the team with the most stars starts the next attack. So in this case, who has got the most stars between both teams? Let's have a look. Arihan had the ball, so that's he's trying to get the attack going. So how many stars? Arihan is a star, that's one. Uh, one so far. Two for Rens of Brink, that's sorry, two. So just two for star ratings for Dutch. Let's see how many the Italians have. Batikas on the field, that's one. Two. Three. So the Italians already get the ball back. So they now have the ball. And they will start the attack. And that would have been six minutes off the clock. So the clock's always moving with every sequence. I guess by now, we're probably up to nine minutes of the ball game. Yeah, if that makes sense. So now we begin. Now we begin... It says starts with an attack. So in this particular case, we start with an attack, you count the triangles. In this case, so we've got a green die, five, six, six. Just losing my berries just a little bit. The attack was thwarted. Right, we've got that. And this is where learning the game can be a bit tricky sometimes. You have to get your sequencing right. I've got a flow most of the time. It's a gold die, six. Let's sort it up. Start the next attack. Attack means, yeah, they're going to go for it. So it starts with attack, so we re-roll the dice. The dice has been rolled in the second dice roll. That's five. Black two plus three. So got to count those triangles and squares again. So in the case of Italy, if the black dice is equal to or lower than the triangles, let's have a look first. Let's count the triangles. Uh, let's move the ball around for, for the Italians. There's Caprini. Antonioni, that's two. Roberta Betica, three. So that's a big tick for the Italians because it's lower than their triangles. That's good. However, the if the white die is higher than the squares, the Dutch are in trouble. It's five, so they've got to beat five. They won't. 
Sabir has one. When Janssen has one, that's two. That's that's. The, so now we've got a shot on target now coming in from the Italians. We we'll just roll the dice and just get that done. Roll the dice for the shot. Five has it now for Italy. Because I consulted the die. And that's Claudio Gentile. Sharan gets it to Gentile. Gentile is not the man you want to shoot, but he won't be shooting. He just has the ball. Um, we know it's a shot. This is where I got to make sure. Let's go back a step. I don't know if it will allow me to, because I'll just change my numbers. Cut a long story short, the Dutch had it, the Italians gained the ball back, we know that, and they started their attack. So I'm just going to redo that, So as if I was doing it fresh for the first time. It calls for an attack. So we know that it was an on-target attempt. Good. It says, add the black and white dice and check the on-target column. Now, apologies. There we go. So I wasn't wrong. And yeah, Gentile has it. Always do that first, the green die. Right, it says, after fights so at five and two is seven. So on the cards I'm looking at on here, on target means 01 will take the shot. So it's uh, a ball from Claudio Gentile to Roberto Bettiger. Yeah, because we rolled a seven. Seven of the shots says 01 shoots. Now we're going to roll the dice again, but we already have a dice roll here, or seven here. It says the black die higher than the shot, so we need to add these two together. In this case, betica has got a great shot rating of three. However, Gentile is not the best passer in the world. Unfortunately, that's minus two, two S's, so that's going to come off of him. So he's only going to have a one, that's the power of his shot. It's going to be one. Still a chance. So it says, if the black die is higher than the shot assist stars, the black die in this case is a six. Is it higher than the assist plus the shot? Yes, it is. Or the white die equals, well, we already know the black die is higher, so it's been saved. It says, add the black and white dice together and check on the save column. It's a seven. So six and one. And we now need to look at the save column. It's saved. So the shot was saved, so it's a good shot from Roberto Betica. It was saved by Jan Youngblood for the Dutch. But it's a rebound shot. Back to number one, it rebounds to Betica. We still got it here for the, for, for the Italians. It says, keeper must make a spectacular save. So I'm going to have to roll again. There's another chart here, spectacular chart, save chart. And you'll see how that works. So let's quickly roll for the shot. Four. Because we're asking for 12 on the dice. Four is the amount. And it is saved. So the shot, so you can see the flow. Banagash took the shot and Youngblood saved. So what I'll do there is just launch a new sequence. But the Dutch have the ball. So we've seen how it works, the mechanics of it. I'll get better and better as time goes on. Uh, we've already seen the first shot of the day coming from Roberto Bettiger on a pass by whoever was there before him. I don't know who I moved it from. Was it Gentile? Yes. Gentile passed it to Bettiger. Bettiger shot. It was saved. Rebounded back to Bettiger. And Youngblood picked up a spectacular save. Um, I just had to look at the number, and um, luckily for Youngblood, it doesn't bring his stars into question, it just says saved. There are some that bring the stars into question. So had it been a four star or a five, it, is every chance that could have been a goal? So a great save, spectacular save by Young Youngblood. In real life, I think Young, Youngblood died yesterday, sadly. So let's do one more sequence. The Dutch have the ball. Youngblood will, will, will move it out, so let's... I could use this die roll here, but just not to confuse. I'll press F9, and let's bring it up again. Now then, there's some advanced rules. Because there is no six, 
there's an advanced rule that you can change two defenders instead of the offensive player. So we change, you add these two together. So you move these two. The ones slip over. So Betica comes into camera, comes off camera, and Paolo Rossi goes on camera. And we move the two. So Carlo and Tognoni swaps with Calcio. That's an advanced rule I just invoked there. Okay, lovely. So we rolled a six, but the die roll is three. We come down here, it's a highlight roll. So I go back to my um, charts again. Highlight reel M, so highlight reel, match highlight reel. Roll the 12 die, which is already rolled. 12. It says a rare result. Oh my god, so let's have a look. I've never seen that before. What is a rare result? I don't even know which card it's on. Bear with me, that's a first. So there is a rare result here somewhere. But I'm looking at the chart and I don't see it. That's one chart down. Not that one, so it's got to be on this one. What is a rare event? Kicker and header shots. Player injuries, maybe? I can see all kinds of stuff. Card ratings, hostile referee. So we have a rare event, and I can't see it. So bear with me one tick. I have the rule book here somewhere. So young bro's about to bowl the ball out. It was a um, a highlight reel. So I just consult the actual guideline. That caught me right out. I've never come across that before, actually. Rare event. I thought I'd seen it all. I thought I'd seen it all. Just looking through injuries, extra time. Rare results, okay. Rare results case occur on the highlight reel charts. Approximately every six games. When a rare result happens, consult the rare re results. Tables printed in the back of this rule book. Okay. So I've got the rule book here. Okay. So we have to roll another 12 again. Two sided six dice. This is new. So that's a four, and on this chart it says, T with possession, which is Holland, rolls again on the B chart, and there's a B chart, so here we go again. I don't know if you, in this particular case, need to move the green die. That's something new. Let's try. Keep that in mind, that three. The B chart, roll it 12 again, that's 11. There's another die I'm using. That's why I have the two six dice. It says, oh my god, this is ridiculous, I'll have to end it after this one. It says, two red cards issued, one for each team. Check card rating or hard quality to determine. So I don't know what happened there, it looked like it must have been a fight. And we've had a red card, two red cards, one for each team. It says use either one or two. Checked card rating two. Luckily for the for Italy, there is no one there. A Benetti would have been the one with a card two. I'll make him a card two now. And Romeo Benetti has been sent off. He was lucky to escape a booking earlier on. He is gone. That is crazy. <laughs> and I'm going to send off some of Holland as well. Who was the roughest player in those days? There's some people with card on it. But it says, use hard if not the card. There's a card there, but is there anyone that would have got a double card in that World Cup? And it was a rough World Cup. I would say Neeskins was rough. But they're so hard anyway. It could be any of them. Oh my word. That's a first. So, we are going to lose... The roughest player, this is where you've got to rate them properly. But the hardest player on this team is Johan Neeskins. So Neeskins and Rossi, sorry, Benetti, got into a fight in the rarest of rare plays, I've got to say. And they're both off the field. What happened there? We'll have to have a drop ball and decide it. So, you are seeing some of the rarest thing happen there. But I hope you got the flow of it. Because I'm completely stunned. 
I don't even know how to play a man down. It does have that man down as well to play shorthanded. And it says, it says, well, this is rare. I'm glad I did this now. It does say, as the crowd goes crazy, two players sent off for fighting. And a rare, rare, rare result. Playing shorthanded. Right, so you still rotate the, the number, but he's not there. Basically, you carry on without it. It's that simple. Just reading the rules. Okay, so Holland had the ball. There was clearly uh, some, a melee that happened. We're going to have to do a drop ball. We'll use a decider dice. And here we go again. We'll do one more sequence. It's one, so Italy get the ball. Six. There is no six on here, so we have to use a three and a two on the defensive team. But <laughs> we know that Wim Janssen won't be there and uh, if it does call a three there's no effect three and the two swap out Willy van der Kerkhoff well no, I could be tactical and move these players around a little bit just in case three is more defensive than two which it is but then they lose the goal chance so that's really interesting so that's that so we've got that it's a five five is a ref decision so the ref even though he's a homer sent a player off and we've got a ref whistles again so this is a typical 1970s soccer game both teams were rough in fact if you want to see rough by the way it is true to form at the moment check out argentina the winner i haven't rated him yet but i have rated brazil and they've got some tough players as well but i don't think they've got any cards there's nobody particularly rough in that team although they did play rough so again this is where after i have to make sure the ratings are right well, what a spectacular start to this game. So, we said five. Highlight rare, ref decision. So, here we go. We know he's a favour in the Dutch, allegedly. Let's go to five on the build-up chart. Or the pitch action chart. Rough start to the game. All these minutes are ticking by. We're probably about 12 minutes in. We've got a shot. Spectacular save by Youngblood. And uh, a near red card for Benetti. And then he gets sent off for fighting. With Johan Neeskins. So here we go. We're going to look now at. Uh, this is fun. We're going to look now at the ref decision. On the chart. This is why I really have enjoyed. Soccer, Soccer Blast. It has so much narrative to it. I'm playing this online. Not online. So it says ref decision. Roll again on decision M. The dice is already rolled. Because I'm using two 12 with dice. It's a 10. So I'm using here to speed things up. And it says, the home team, and it wants me to roll the green dice. In this case, I can't. So we're on a 10 at the moment, so let's just roll this die again. Oh, Jesus. It's saying two. So the home team, swap these around. Right, that's it. We know it was a 10 on here, so that's fine. And uh, it says, home team, green player, is called for a foul. In this case, Renny van der Kerkhoff is called for a foul. It says, it was a 10. Player called for a foul, argues vehemently with the referee. The referee is now friendly to the visiting team. So we know the referee was pleasant with the Dutch but now he's anti-Dutch and he's got an Italian <laughs> uh, so, so, so no booking though no booking it doesn't seem it just says um, green player call for a foul so that possession is going to turn over to the Dutch Renny van der Kerkhoff lucky there not to get a card and it says he is now friendly so there's a referee chart so every time I go to referee I go back to that one so I'll put a little referee icon here at some point, I'll have to create one online. Online, just quickly copy and paste one. But at the moment, let's put here, the ref is friendly with the Italian. What a start. 
One shot in from Roberto Betica, set up by Claudio Gentile, hit it against Youngblood. Youngblood saved it and went back to Betica. He did it and Youngblood saved. Shortly afterwards, there was a melee between Niskins and Roberto Benetti, Romeo Benetti. And both players were sent from the pitch. And now we've just seen another um, flare-up from Renny van der Kerkhoff. Uh, this is what happened in 78. I mean, this is just a roll of the die at the moment. Uh, the card did come into it for Niskins and uh, Benetti. They were the two hardest players. Uh, I'm sure there's another way of doing it, but that's the way. I have to just make sure the ratings are absolutely spot on um, to represent their tough players, and they're off. Wow. Uh, that's, that's sensational stuff. So now we know who has the ball. Free kick to Italy. And we'll start it again. Roll those dice. Five. So five switches out. So Scherrer on the ball now for Italy. And we know that it's 11. 11 is a corner kick. So a corner kick to the Italians. This all compresses everything down into highlights. So you're wondering why. And of course I've been knocking off time. It's just that I can't remember how the time goes. I haven't mastered that bit yet. But I think it's one minute per action unless it calls for it. So it's a corner kick now to Italy. Let's see how that works. So here's a corner kick chart. It's asking me to use... Anything. Right, okay, so there's a number of options here, so let's do this. So the dice is rolled already. It's asking me for a 12 roll, two six die rolls. I'm going to use the automatic one that's there already. That's five. Referee decision K. And we know he's friendly with the Italians. So referee decision, go to the referee chart. A lot going on in this game between these two titans of 1978. That's why my papers are sticking together from having too much fudge the other day. So, what a stop-start game. This is typical 1970s game. I'm trying to find the referee chart stuck to my papers. Here we go. Referee chart K. We know the referee's friendly to the Italians. So, I'm going to consult that chart. And it says... Oh my god, this is going to have to keep real track of these rolls. I'll do it again. It's a, it's a 12 die, so we use the 8 this time. Defence foul, yellow card and free kick. Because we're using a friendly Italian referee. So it's a direct free kick, a foul against the Dutch. So Scherer, I don't know who took the corner. The corner was taken by Scherer, who wouldn't normally take the corner. I would say that was Calzio. Took the corner there's a foul foul against Port Fleet. I'll just use it, it doesn't tell me who, so I'm just going to say it was against his opposite number Port Fleet. And it's a direct free kick, so now we've got to get a free kick for for the Dutch, for the Dutch, for the Italians. So, uh, until you getting the friendly referee here, which is perfectly normal, um, in international football in the 1970s for Italy. So, direct free kick, which means they can score from a goal. Here we go. So we're going to use, we can choose who takes the free kick. It's going to be Calzio taking the free kick. Let's put Fleet, create a foul just outside the box. Who's got the kick rating? In this case, it's his free kick rating. Calzio does, uh, who was, I'm sure, the kicker, if not Antonioni, but uh, he's got the kick. If two people had the kick rating, I would choose them. You're allowed to choose whoever, just like in real life. But in this case, Calcio is standing over the ball. We've rolled an eight. On the kicking chart, it says... Did we roll an eight? Five. We rolled a five, so it was down here. And it says, the kicking... So here we go. Calcio steps up. A tremendous strike. It's on target. Use the player's kick rating. So it's on target. If you look at the on-target chart, it looks like. Oh my god, I'm shuffling around with this because I'm recording it. And I'm panicking. It's an on-target shot. Uh, see, there's an on-target shot, so I have to roll again. Oh my god. Four. I'm using this dice, two dice here. It says... 04 or 05 shoots. So. 
Oh, I see. Got it. So Kowsia took the free kick. We had a foul. Right. And then the chart says on target. So I have to roll for the on target. It will tell me who will shoot. Because the free kick did say the free kick is taken. But it didn't say who was taking it. Now I've rolled. It says four, offensive four or offensive five shoots. Uh, let's see who takes the shot. It will be Belugi, not Belugi, Cabrini or Sherea. None of them are good, to be fair. So let's just leave it with uh, Gaetano Sherea, who takes the shot. They have to roll for the shot. There we go. Let's roll for the shot. Let's use this one down here. It's already rolled. And it says four. So therefore, we have to add two from... God, following this is hard sometimes. The two from Calcio, and it's been neutered by the assist rating of Gaetano Sherea, so it's a so it's zero, but, 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 it is still lower. If the black die is equal to or lower than the shot assist rating, it, it is, it's, if the black die is equal to, which it is, it's two, or lower than the shot assist rate, and here's the second part of it, the white die higher than the goal is on target save, we've got a goal chance. So Sharia's shot, still on target. If it's lower or higher than the on target stars, no, it's lower. It is saved, so the shot is saved. Add the black and white together. That's four. Go to the defended column. So another save by John Blood. Go to the defended column. See who actually defends it. Let's roll for that. Let's use this one down here if I didn't use it before. That's two. I found a new way to do my spreadsheet from this. That's four. It is wide. So it's defended, we know that much. D3 with a circle. There is nobody in that position. So it says the shot was wide by Jack Jetonic Sherea. Right, got it, that makes sense. That was just luck that you happened to be Sherea again. So that was the sequence there again. Gauzer took the free kick. Gaetano Sherea got the shot in. And it was saved. It wasn't saved. It was defended. And it was collected by D3 if he was there. But D3 is not there. He's gone. So therefore, the outfield fight, it says 05, which is this guy, was wide with the shot. So, if that's the case, he was wide, who has possession? It says, if the indicated player has a circle symbol, he maintains possession. Otherwise, the opponent gains and maintains possession. So, though Shirea was wide, Italy still have it. Okay? So, all this time, this clock is ticking. It's still nil-nil. We had two players sent off. A shot from Italy, and we had Betica make two shots. But the Dutch have done absolutely nothing so far, other than fight and give up free kicks. So here we go again. Let's start again with the Italians in command. Swatch the threes. Go to the green die first. So Marco Tardelli on the ball now for Italy. Tardelli scored that great goal in 1982. Right. Seven. Midfield battle. I like midfield battles. Look at my chart and see what seven is. The midfield battle will be. Okay, so re-roll the green die for quality. So this is where we look at the qualities of the teams. This area here. So re-roll it says. We know we have two sets of dice. So we need a six die. Gold die will come in now as a spare. That's three. Mark off three minutes. Team with the most strong starts the next minute with an attack. So team with the most strong. So let's have a quick look. There's one. Two for Tardelli. 
it's not looking good for Italy but let's see with the Dutch Hahn has got strong Wim Sabir has got strong but it's a tie for strong so we use a decider dice zero so the Dutch have it whistles from the crowd now both teams are very both strong God, it's probably coming up to what 30 minutes now just literally just counting off the actions in my head so here we go again so we're gonna have to roll the dice now with the Dutch in command so here we go two swap out the two go to the green dice first always go green first with Van der Kerkhoff now has it for the Dutch and six on here is a take on this is an individual matchup now it says use the matchup from the dice combination so it's going to be two on the attack which is Willy van der Kerkhoff versus four on the defense so van der Kerkhoff taking on Cabrini for the quality that they're after they use the gold dice in this one it's three that means they're going strong again this is an individual one who's got the better strength and it will be nobody again so we're going to have to use the decided dice use the one down here it's already set and yes yeah, sometimes I've got to remember to use it side there. that is a, a win for Reddy van der Kerkhoff so now the Dutch are on the attack it says so Reddy van der Kerkhoff wins the tussle on the left hand side against the left back Cabrini here's Willy van der Kerkhoff down on the right hand side for the Dutch so the Dutch fans it's still nil nil both men down both teams down to 10 men Rene van der Kerkhoff starts the attack. So now we go triangles again. Here's Hahn. One, two, three, four, five. Because Rensenbrink is strong. That beats the dice. No problem. As long as black is less than what the triangles are. And the defense. Let's see. The defense. I'll still struggle with the defense part of it. The attack is all right. This is a high number. Always, not always good for the defense. But it's never strong defense. Squares. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. Let's have a look. The black die is equal to or lower than the triangle. We know that. And the white die higher than the squares. In this case, it is. It is a shot on target. Here comes the dice. Add the black and the white dice to check the on target result and see which player shoots so use the green die for assist help so in this case the assist is going to come from nobody because he's not there because three he's not there this is van der kirkhoff going on his own oh dear i wish i could just learn this bit faster it's getting i'm getting better it says Use the on target column to see which one shoots. Go to the on target column. I've got it. Roll the 12 dice. We've done that because we use this one down here. Six. Six is offensive player. Three shoots. And there's nobody there. There's nobody there. So, uh, Van der Kerkhoff bringing the ball forward. That three was rolled to see who would shoot nobody was there so I'm just gonna have to put that down as a what no shot let's go back to the rules again let's go back to those rules I hope you're enjoying this if you do watch it I might do one live next time I'll say no please don't please don't oh I've enjoyed this bit now I'm doing it under pressure of recording it and now we have it is just to play the game with those who are new to the shot. Playing short-handed. Sometimes a team will force to play with fewer than 11 players due to the injury record. This happens to keep the players' cards of us. Which are, uh, the tiny plans are the bit open. When they, okay, so you can still rotate the three, but that's fine. Uh, when the game actually... Hold on a minute. Who shoots because he's still there right he, he's right he says if a result calls for action for vacant position simply ignore it 
If a successful attack calls for a shot from a vacant position, it is assumed the shot was not attempted and the ball goes out of bounds. If the rest decision chart calls for right, so it's out of bounds. So there we go. So I'll stop it there. I've enjoyed that and I'll do part three another time. So what I love about the game is I'm just estimating where we are in terms of time. I reckon about 17, 20 minutes in. So uh hope you've enjoyed that little soiree into this game.